we can say real or not real. And yes, it does bring in joy. It does bring in peace. But understand, understand that yes, this is a source connection. So they're showing that a lot of people can connect and say, oh, I'm connecting in with the zero point, but really it's a guide or an angel or a teacher or something like mm -hmm. that um, because they have a, it's whatever we think it is, that's what we're going to connect to. Well, let's that's get confusing. back to the really basic questions. I know we talked the other night that there's like three basic questions. Mm -hmm. Who are we? Why are we here? Um, what's our purpose? So in reflection of what I observed previously that I feel personally that the more I manifest the zero point, as defined as the source, the source of joy, the source of light, the source of wisdom, the source of knowing, and the source of creation, the happier and more joyful I experience my being. Um, I've often told people, you know, people say, oh, you wrote a novel, did you channel it? I say, no, I didn't channel my novel. I, my life was channeled so that I could write my novel exactly. because I had to have all these experiences so that I could share them mm -hmm. and so nothing was random in my own experience. So it's at that level that I personally feel that whether you're aligning with your higher self and through your higher self, you're able to align and manifest the information that comes from the zero point, the more likely your human existence is going to be joyful and lead you, whether you're a spiritual seeker or just here to have a good time, mm -hmm. to have a good time. Yeah. So what reflection back could the guides share on that observation? As far as those three questions and being here on this planet and um, what, what, they're, what they're screaming in my ear is, is that as we evolve as human beings spiritually, as like you are your higher self, okay? So, so what they're saying right now is, is you are your higher self. So really what you probably hear as interference is probably your brain. Mm -hmm. Whereas other people think that they're their brain and they may every once in a while be inspired by something that comes in of a higher purpose because like me during that accident, my higher self was outside of me. It was a different being. But as we evolve as spiritual beings, as we evolve in consciousness, our vibration goes up, our frequency goes up. So our awareness goes into higher aspects of ourselves. So then, then we then, I look at myself as... A high, my higher self living in Marissa. I don't look at myself as Marissa with a higher self that I need to connect to. So as you kind of evolve through these different layers. So unlike the accident moment where you saw your higher self mm -hmm. and said, let's get away from here. Yeah. Now you feel you've integrated. Now I know that's me. That's you. Yeah. But you still have the body of Marissa. Yes, exactly. And, and sometimes I'll say, oh gosh, I hear Marissa going off in my head saying, oh, you need to be right. You need to do this. You need to do that. And that, 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 that. And that's when I have to kind of clear my mind and just kind so, of chill out. And, and I think a lot of people can identify with it. So whereas you would say 10 years ago, you were Marissa that's occasionally listened to your higher mm -hmm. self. Now you're your higher self who occasionally listens to yes. Marissa. Yes, yes. And I usually laugh at Marissa <laughs> and go, oh, God, listen to her, listen to her, listen to what she's saying, listen to what she's doing. And I dealt with Marissa a lot when I was pregnant because I was scared and I had fear and I had all these things and I didn't understand. and you know, all these things. So, so I experienced my human self a lot, you know, and, and again, we're all these different layers. So maybe eventually human beings can say, you know, I am God living in, in Marissa or in Bill. And, and we reach these different layers of consciousness, like you were saying with the, um, the electricity is as we evolve, that's what ascension is. Mm -hmm. You know, ascension, you can, you hear ascended masters, what they've done is they have basically embodied their soul. They've embodied this huge piece of themselves and they are living within a human body. So they have access to all their past lives. They have access to other beings that their souls created. So they have an enormous amount of information inside of them. So they are like their soul self living in a human body. So as we evolve spiritually, we plug into bigger and bigger pieces of ourselves. So you are your higher self and every once in a while you hear Bill and that's why you say, oh, I feel like I'm always kind of connected to my higher self because you are. So the next thing you would start working on is how do I connect up to my soul? How do mm -hmm. I connect up to that bigger piece of me? And that's kind of like the whole game behind spiritual ascension is connecting to bigger and bigger, okay. bigger pieces but of Okay, but when I'm, like I have certain foods I really love, like lobster and chocolate and champagne, when I'm enjoying them, I'm definitely in my human. Or maybe your spirit likes them. <laughs> <laughs> 
they're bad for you, then, you know, I don't, I don't know. So as far as, like, well, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're bad for yeah. me. I don't think they are. I mean, I enjoy them. Uh -huh. I mean, if they well, yeah, you're, you're human, but, you know, yeah. what, what raises our vibration is mm -hmm. when we feel happy, when we feel right. joy, when we feel peace. So if you're eating something that you like or you're laughing or you're having mm -hmm. a good time, then your vibration's going up. And, and well, I mean, you know, as I've gotten older, obviously, I have to pay attention and moderate. And you can't have ice cream and lobster and mm -hmm. champagne every single day. It's not healthy for the body. But what I do find, and I'm not sure why, you know, they, they all taste good, but... It's not just the taste, you know, as a child, these were treats, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm kind of programmed the human side of me to experience joy when mm -hmm. I do indulge in these foods. Yeah, and a lot of it has to do, you know, as you know, with, like, mm -hmm. the brain chemicals and the neurotransmitters mm -hmm. and all that stuff, but, you know, our spirits are here to have a good time. Our higher self mm -hmm. is here to have well, a good well, time. Well, the reason I, I raise this is because, you know, for the average person, and for me for most of my life, I mean, if you had told me... Oh, now you're your higher self. Well, I say, well, wait a second. I don't want to stop being Bill. I like yeah. Bill. I like the personality of Bill. I like some of my, you know, egoistic tendencies, if you will, the things I like to do. Um, and, you know, certainly I, I do think when I'm playing golf, it's Bill playing golf, not mm -hmm. my higher self. I think I'd be more like Tiger Woods or an old Tiger Woods. <laughs> you know, if my higher self, you know, I, I'd be getting more under par. But... Um, so it, it, it's the balance that I'm trying to get to that as we ascend, we don't lose, because it's a little bit like I remember in, in a previous conversation, we were talking about my dad who's passed over mm -hmm. and you, you sort of, you, you know, you go into a spirit world, but that's not necessarily transcending into the heaven world. Mm -hmm. And you explain that, hey, Mill, it's okay to go to heaven. You're not going to lose what you had in the spirit world yeah. or your experiences in the human realm you take it with you. Yeah. And so that's more what I, I want to reassure the viewers that it's not, oh, Bill is in his higher self. He's no longer Bill. I'm yeah. still Bill. Yeah, you're still Bill. And, and I mean, I'm still Marissa. And the way that they're they're showing me is actually a picture. They're kind of showing us all as like these um, radios, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, and we're connected to these different layers of ourself. And so what it is, is really you just have access to, to right. that information now freely. And yes, your, your human will say, no, I want this and I want that. You're still a human, but you have access to that. Not everybody has access. I mean, everybody has access to God. Everybody has access to this information. But that's the whole purpose, like we said in the last conversation we had, of all these different like layers of ourself, all these different levels of heaven, is the more and more you evolve, the higher pieces you have access to yourself. It's hard to explain. The, the, um, so the guides kind of want to take it back to, to mm -hmm. where we are before. So they're saying, right. look at it like this. They said, look at it like this. They want to start with, with um, the, basically the soul. So the soul is, let's say you're a soul, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're going to, you're going to create, you're going to create some, some reservoirs of information basically, which are, are like the higher self. So you've got mm -hmm. like a couple different like reservoirs of information here and you're going to create say um, seven clones of yourself mm -hmm. okay so there's seven bills and they're all living in different worlds different places now who's creating this my soul is creating your soul yeah so your okay. soul is the creator so your soul is creating so now spirits. I, i've got bill times seven yeah okay. yeah so so bill's a soul let's say bill's a soul so there's seven souls and they're all exact perfect clones of you and they're living in different worlds in different places mm -hmm. And as they're experiencing things, they are uploading all of their information to the higher self. They're uploading all information to this information reservoir. So everything that you're experiencing, say, on Earth, everything you're experiencing in the Pleiades, everything you're experiencing in Idaho, in New York, you know, wherever these... these okay, just, just to interrupt you for a second. So is the bill that I'm experiencing in this body, which you've told me is most of my higher self mm -hmm. right now, Am I in competition with the other bills? No, no, it's all teamwork. It's all okay. teamwork. So that's why I was saying earlier, you know, if you ask your higher self, should I take this job? Maybe another aspect of you is already, you know, experiencing that. So the higher self may say, no, there's already, you know, someone is already experiencing that. You don't need to do that. So it's like you're a big team. So you're creating these different aspects of yourself that are going to experience and, and things. you said that I'm sort of at a point now because I'm mostly in my higher self where my next journey would be to become my soul. Yeah, exactly. And if I become my soul, then I have access to all the experiences of the, quote, clones. Yes. And so I become 
a more fully integrated being mm -hmm. that still incorporates the Bill that I've always known. Yes. Both the human, everyday Bill, the higher soul Bill, yeah. and now the soul Bill. Exactly. It's okay. so confusing. No, it's well, so no, no, confusing. it doesn't have to be, from a mathematical point of view, it's not confusing oh, at all. Okay. Well, then. Because, I mean, mathematically, it all makes sense. You're just becoming a more potent version of yourself with greater access to mm -hmm. information. Yeah. And, you know, we won't go further because this is a lot to absorb. Yeah. But I'm assuming that once you get to the soul level, there's more of yeah. the journey. And what's nice from a mathematical point of view, of course, is it's an open system. Because mm -hmm. if, if you have a closed system, then, a, you know, obviously you reach the closure and the whole system can collapse. Mm -hmm. When you have an open system, it can continue to evolve. Okay, got it. Yeah. So it's good yeah. that there's complexity and diversity. Yeah, and um, so here's Abraham. Abraham's one of our guides. He's part of our, our soul group. He's not like a... He would basically be one of the guides that oversees the reservoir of information. Mm -hmm. So any of the clones that are feeding into that higher self, there's, there's basically what they're saying is there's 12 uh, souls that have created a bunch of spirits. And all those spirits and their experiences are feeding into one higher self or one mm -hmm. information reservoir. And Abraham is... A teacher for that so we're mm -hmm. part of the same so technically everybody in this room has the same higher self but it's not a person it's a it's an information and reservoir. just because uh, the Hicks's channeling of Abraham it's a different hasn't thing. been yeah. so well uh -huh. received we, we do need to yeah. state that it's not that Abraham. yeah it's a different it's a different yeah. Abraham theirs yeah. is I think a group consciousness that they call Abraham ours is an actual soul or being mm -hmm. or something and he comes in so he's saying that the what we want to bring forward today with the information that we want to bring forward today is a basic understanding so that people can <laughs> all these guys are coming in okay what we want to bring forward today is a basic understanding that people when they feel joy they are feeling their spirit when they are feeling peace they are feeling their spirit the only thing that people must understand is if they tune into the aspect inside of them that is God, the aspect inside of them that is that is peace, that is joy, that is their soul, they are accessing higher consciousness. They are accessing higher pieces of themselves. And we do not say higher by better. We just say higher so that the human mind can understand and see that it is outside of the human mind. It is information that is not being carried within the brain, it is being processed by the brain, but it is not the brain. You must understand that the human mind can process energy, it can process concepts, it can process spiritual energy, but it is not the brain that is creating this, it is the brain that is reading it. So the simplistic way of looking at this is, the human body is a vehicle. The human body is a vehicle with a processor that will process the energy, process the information that is run through it. So when the consciousness of the awareness or the spirit that is each person on this planet is living and driving a vehicle, living and driving a human body, they are prone to the laws of the earth plane. For when this channel said earlier, it is not real, it is not real, life is not real, this is not the case when you look at it from the human aspect. The human aspect, it is very real. It is very real. The third dimension is very real. The earth is very real. What is not real is the aspect of the fact that the spirit is living down here and when the spirit leaves, the spirit will be in a place where it calls home, where it is real mm. to it, where there are no laws of gravity, where there are no laws that say, if you want something, you may not get it because there is something within the human vehicle that you're driving that says, I'm not worthy of this because somebody told me I was unworthy of an ice cream cone because somebody else did a better job than me when I was five years old. So the human mind is very complex. The human mind is very complex indeed and understanding and seeing and knowing that Yes, manifesting using the higher self, manifesting using the spirit is something that humans can do and there is so much, there is so much in the world today where people say, I'm going to manifest my dreams, I'm going to manifest everything that I want, everything that I dream and they don't get it, they don't get it. They say, I'm doing these higher self meditations, I'm doing these spiritual meditations, I'm clearing my mind, I'm, I'm thinking of what I want to manifest, I'm doing all of these things that I need to do but what human beings do not understand is that the human mind trumps everything. 
The human mind trumps everything. So people say, I'm going to control my mind. And we say, <laughs> that is very hard to do. That is very hard to do unless you understand and see and know that the human mind wins when on the earth plane. The human mind wins. This is why many of us cannot enter into your field. This is why many of us cannot even help those that we are here to help. We are contracted to different souls to help these souls. And these souls, human minds say, nope, you don't exist, so you can't help me. And this is very frustrating indeed. This is very frustrating indeed for the spirit being that exists on the spirit plane, which is called the soul plane, which this channel will call the university. The spirit that lives in this university where I am a teacher, so to speak, enters into the earth plane knowing full well that the human being may end up not believing in anything outside of itself. It will only believe that it has an ego. And this is why this channel speaks of the accident where she was upset that the human would not listen to her. Many people are on autopilot right now. Many people are, they're human and they're not being influenced very much by spirit guides, by angels or by their spirit at all because they are human. They don't believe in anything outside of them. And that is fine. They are experiencing human experience, but we must be invited in. We must be allowed in at some level in order to help people manifest. So understand that people will begin reading books. They'll begin reading books and saying, I must manifest this. I must manifest a million dollars this year. And I'm going to do everything that this book tells me to do. But if they believe, if they believe that money is the root of all evil, that belief is going to trump all of their manifestation. And this is why we want to bring a clarity into individuals so that they can understand that the human mind must be looked into and people must see, well, maybe I'm not manifesting this because I'm afraid that I'm going to fail. Maybe I'm not going to experience this because last time I made a bunch of money, I lost it all. Or my parents were very wealthy and they lost everything and it was devastating. So I'm afraid to make a bunch of money. These things must be worked on and these things can be worked on through the higher self. This is the beauty of the higher self because the higher self somewhere in time, past, present, future, or parallel lives, the higher self somewhere has experienced an experience or a lifetime where there was not fear of losing everything once the money was made. And this is when the human can turn this over and say, higher self, give me the ability to manifest this money and remove all blocks from me like the fear of losing all my money once I make it, remove this block from me so that I can manifest this. And all the human really has to do is to visualize the higher self sending this information into their mind, into their body, and they can visualize this as a waterfall, they can visualize this as an energy, they can visualize this as a shape, as a number, as a sound, as anything. But allowing this information to come into their physical body and remove these blocks from them and this will help them manifest. Many people cannot manifest because their mind is blocking it. So know that the higher self has so much information that it can send to each human being, but the human beings are not able to receive it because they don't know to ask. And this is what we want to help people to understand so that the world can begin to be a much happier place. How would it be if somebody could say, I want a new car and they get a new car the next day. This is what human beings can experience. This is what they can do. But there are limitations in the mind that say that it cannot happen. It's very interesting that because we, we were asking at the very beginning, what are the benefits of connecting with the higher self? So for those who are more on the material plane, one of the clear benefits is manifesting financial abundance yes. would be one of the immediate benefits once you learn how to connect with your higher self. Mm -hmm. Very interestingly, we have a book that um, I actually have participated as a co-author uh, with the main authors being Dr. Shah and Adam Markell. Adam Markell is the head of New Peaks, which is a motivational uh, company that is an outgrowth of the millionaire mind that Harvick uh, had created. And Dr. Shah is a soul healer. And they've, they're calling their book Soul Over Matter, um, Ancient and Modern Techniques for um, Creating Unlimited Financial Abundance. Okay. And what's interesting in terms of the conversation we've just had is in Dr. Shah's world, it's heart over mind mm -hmm. and soul over heart. Every, the soul is the boss is how he described it. So it's very similar again 
And I know you know nothing about Dr. Shah, yeah. we've never even discussed him, but again, from a totally different worldview that is based on Chinese and Tao principles, um, confirmation of what your guides have just told you, in that if you allow the heart, and it's interesting, we have another client, HeartMath, which has just written a book on heart intelligence, which explains that the heart is actually the most powerful organ mm -hmm. in the body, and that, it, that you have to integrate your mind with your heart to start mm -hmm. manifesting, and then Dr. Shah takes it one more step, well, and which is exactly soul, what we're doing by going up and coming goals, down. Where you could wow. say that you start with your mind, which is more or less your normal physical mm -hmm. body, then you go to your heart, which metaphorically at least is closer to your higher self, mm -hmm. and then you go to your soul, which is obviously closer to your soul self. Yeah. So there's complete uh, congruity mm -hmm. between this system and the system that you've also explained, which is again similar to what we learned when we, we had how do you get the zero point in the solar plexus, mm -hmm. manifestation from your guides of other information that has come from other sources. And of course, one of the goals of what we're doing here is that we know that with seven billion people on our planet, there are millions of different ways of arriving and receiving these truths. Mm -hmm. And that different segments of the population are able to receive certain information in different ways. So we're adding to the collective wisdom and the, and the higher purpose of educating the planet so that there can be less stress on every level for individual humans and their communities. Because starting with each and every human being, the less stress each individual is experiencing, the higher the vibration is going to be for everyone. Exactly. So we all benefit when our neighbor benefits. And yeah. I think that's one of the fundamental uh, missions and goals of, of all the information that we're receiving and that our own dialogue is hoping to illuminate for. Yeah. And, and they're saying that the, the way that the, this Abraham again says, the way that we hope to bring this through, the way that we hope to bring this information through is a very elementary way of human beings, humans that say, I am Bill, I am Marissa, and I have a higher self outside of me that I want to connect with, that I want to bring information through. I want my higher self to send my spirit some information so my spirit can communicate it through my subconscious mind into my conscious mind so that I can then hear the information and get the information from the higher self. This is what we are trying to bring in so that people can have access to this huge reservoir of information, this huge reservoir of information that is so accessible to every human being on this planet, but people don't fully and truly understand how to connect to it. So by knowing and understanding that you are a spirit living within a human body, that you have a connection to a massive amount of information that not only have you lived and contributed to, but others have lived and contributed to, you have access to all of this information, this is how you can begin to manifest your dreams. This is how you can begin to manifest the life that you want. Because somebody somewhere throughout time has experienced and done exactly what it is that you want to do. And by asking your higher self to send this information into your electrical system, into your field, into your body, your brain will then know how to experience it and then it will experience it. People cannot experience something if they don't know how to experience it. For you will see people who have been wealthy and have lost their money many, many times. They become very wealthy very quick again, but then they lose it. They become very wealthy very quick because their electrical system within their brain, their mind understands how to become wealthy. So they continue to become wealthy. People that do not understand how to become wealthy never become wealthy. They are always poor because that's what they understand. So understanding that there is a reservoir of information above that which is many people are tuning into the spirit. They are tuning into the subconscious mind. They're tuning into a piece of them that is them but hasn't experienced what they want to experience, so they're not manifesting their dreams. They're not manifesting what they want. So we're bringing in the ability for people to prove that their higher self is real by giving you the opportunity to ask for information to be brought into your field so that you can experience what you want to experience. The same thing happens when people become spiritual, when people begin to ask angels, they ask guides, they ask 
ask spiritual beings to come into their energy to bring them information, they start to experience things in their life that they have never experienced before because information that is truly pretty much outside of them, outside of their spirit, is brought into their field and they are able to experience things that they haven't experienced before. And this proves spirit. So what we are bringing in today is a way to prove to those of you that do not believe that things outside of you are real, to be able to prove to you that things are real. Test yourself. Test your higher self. Test your reservoir of information. Test your spirit. Ask your spirit to connect with that which is your higher self and bring in the information. Bring in the information of something that you want. You want to make $2,000 of disposable income next month. You want all of the blocks removed that will keep you from making that money. You want those blocks removed and you want your higher self to send in the information that will give your energy the experience of what it feels like to make that extra money and see if it begins to happen. Many times, sometimes it will happen immediately. Sometimes you'll realize, oh, maybe there's another block in there that I need to release. But understanding that you have the ability to do anything on this planet, be anything, go anywhere, do anything, because of the information that is coming from the higher self. And that is truly what the higher self is. The tri higher self is experiences, energy, emotion, feelings, things that you have not experienced, that you have access to, that you can pull into your field, move, pull into your field and experience things that you have not experienced. They're going in, definitely in the direction of manifesting. <laughs> well, one of the interesting things, I, I made this observation, and most of my observations I, I made when I was very young, and they weren't channels, at least I didn't think of them as being channeled, and I didn't even believe in this cosmology of guides and angels mm -hmm. and stuff. But one of the things, and this is over 30 years ago, um, it just dawned on me that the universe itself is a universe of unlimited abundance. And if you think of it as the zero point in information, um, there's no scarcity whatsoever. I can have access to all the information in the universe, and you can have access to all the information in the universe, and everybody listening, even if there's a hundred million people out there listening, can have access to the same information, and it doesn't diminish any one of us. Exactly. And if you look at nature, you know, we, we, you get situations where, you know, one plant can take too much space and, you know, blot out another, you know, species, but it's not because there's not enough sunshine and there's not enough resources, it's more of the way the resources are allotted. And that's pretty much the same that I've observed as human beings. We have the ability as a human species to create more than enough of everything for everyone. But it's how we do it, how we create our distribution systems, how we create our economic systems that create these artificial scarcities mm -hmm. that unfortunately as human beings requiring sustenance and shelter and clean air and clean water affect, actually I believe at this time over a billion people on our planet are living in what we could only call extreme poverty and with lack. But it's totally artificial. It's not necessary. It's not a situation where, oh, if those people have more, we're going to have less. That's a false human construct and I think that the sooner people start connecting and manifesting, the more quickly we're going to find new systems that will prevent this artificial scarcity and the enormous rage and violence that indirectly is caused by very uneven distribution of resources. What the guides are saying right now is they're saying that, yes, this is very true, but that's the beauty of the earth plane. That's the beauty of, here comes nature right here. <laughs> um, the the beauty of the earth plane is that there is that variation between between mm -hmm. when a soul wants to go down and live a life of poverty many souls will choose to come down here and live a life of poverty so that they can become humble say so they were very wealthy in a past life and they were very greedy and they killed people or and got away with it they may come down not to punish themselves and say I'm going to go be poor to punish myself in this next lifetime but come down and experience that so that the other side can be experienced, so some humility can be gained, or, or you know, something like that. They may still come down and kill people. Who knows? You know, but it's, it's the, it's kind of like the, what is it, the yin and the yang, yeah. wanting to experience all the different experiences. And if you can kind of look at the earth plane as a, as a stage or as a, as a kind of like virtual reality for these souls to experience every little thing, 
you begin to see that, that there's really no like good or bad. But if you're in a lifetime, if you're living a life, say, you know, we're living mm -hmm. in a life where, you know, we can manifest money, we can make mm -hmm. money, we can do all these things. We're not living in a bush somewhere, right. you know, in some third world country. Um, so maybe the conversation and having with them of manifesting would be manifesting more water or manifesting mm -hmm. more food, not manifesting a new Mercedes or a BMW. No, or, but that's what I'm talking about. And, and, and uh, I'm not suggesting that everyone should have the same level of economic experience. But some people sense. want to have the blocks when they're born but, down here. It seems to me that we do have an obligation as a human species because being poor in today's modern world is much worse, I believe, than being poor a thousand years ago. Yeah. Because a thousand years ago, even if you were poor, you had clean air, you had clean water. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, we're creating situations where those very basic elements, and there's no, there's no necessity for that, mm -hmm. is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and I totally agree. And the guys were just saying that, that many people, what they wanted to kind of put in here was that many people will be born into a situation mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be poor. Right. You know, if they yeah, can't well, that, that's but, fine. But, yeah. but, but there's levels of poverty within it. It's like, we don't need to be sadistic. We don't yeah. need to be mean. Um, that was actually another question that I had wanted to ask. When you are connected with your higher self and you're feeling joy and you're doing good, great. But unfortunately, for people that may not be connected to their higher self, I mean, for all we know, the, the, the terrorist who is slitting someone's throat, but feeling that they're aligned with their concept of God, is experiencing joy in that moment. So just the experience of joy does not necessarily indicate that you're connected to your higher self. So how do we parse the false belief of a connection with zero point or source and the true connection. Ooh, now we're getting really deep down into it because um, there are some souls that are kind of dark souls. You know, there are some some darker souls and some some uh, higher selves that are trying to evolve. And, and when we talk about soul groups and uh, you know how we we're kind of part of the same soul group. All of our souls, all of our spirits are kind of adding all this information to our higher self so our higher self can evolve. There are higher selves over there that are kind of like uh, darker ones. Mm -hmm. um, so when someone's connecting with, with the higher self or their soul or their, their spirit self, it may not be you know pure bliss and joy and, and all that. That's why the importance of the zero point not being our soul or not being our higher self, it's the, the peace inside of us that's pure. That's pure. Um, a lot of those those religions, those people that are down here killing people or slitting someone's throat, they're down here and that was kind of their plan, which is horrible. Um, that was a plan or um, maybe something at the person's throat they're slitting, maybe it happened the other way around in another mm -hmm. lifetime. So that these souls make these contracts to come down and experience these things. So looking at it from a 3D way and we go, oh my God, how what's going on with these people, but really on a soul level, there could be a contract there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree that, that they, I don't think that the people are, what the guides are saying is when they're, when they're doing something, they're not necessarily feeling joy, they're feeling rage, but they think that rage is joy. Mm -hmm. They think rage is love. They think that, you know, when you feel rage and anger and, and you're going to go out and you're going to go do this, it's because you have a vengeful, angry God that's, that's, you're trying to be like them. So when we, we, this is the guide talking, when we introduce that God is joy and peace, yes, you feel that, but there's others that feel that God is rage and anger mm -hmm. and wrath and I will destruct you if you don't think my way. So then they are imitating their God. So they think they're being like God when really those that see God as compassion and peace and joy say that's, that's not God. Okay. Well, this also raises a question for me that I've had for quite a while. This whole thing with reincarnation and, oh, I murdered someone a thousand years ago, so now they're reincarnated and I'm reincarnated and they get to murder me. Well, that seems very old school. I, I, I hope that Not we would evolve case, but, yeah. beyond that. I mean, isn't there a way that if I did something horrible, I can learn my lesson without forcing someone else to do something just as horrible to me? Yes, yes. And, and usually karma works in that if you do something horrible to somebody, then in the next lifetime, you're going to do something wonderful for them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of canceling out this horrible thing that you have done. But really, it's all on a spirit level. So when everybody's in their university, when everybody's over on the other, the other side, on the soul plane, and we're in our spirit bodies, 
and just where you're like where your father went when he crossed mm-hmm. over he went back over to the university or over to the school where everybody is there and they're in their soul families and their soul groups and they're planning their next lifetime to come back down to the earth plane when they're there they make their contracts with each other and say okay we're going to be primary mates in this in this next lifetime you cheated on me and you left me and because of that I felt desperation I felt sadness I felt helplessness and in this lifetime you'll feel desperation and helplessness but it won't necessarily mean that I'm gonna cheat on you you may lose your job or you may have a a childhood where you're going to experience this with a parent so it's it's really if you narrow it down to the emotions and the feelings that you experience because really the only difference between the spirit realm and the earth plane is human emotions so when you go to the spirit plane you don't have human emotions when you come down here you have them and that's why we're here as spirits to experience human emotions it's like riding the human emotional roller coaster you get to come down here and experience emotions and what are you going to do with those emotions are you going to be a lunatic and go out and kill people because you're mad because you know somebody put onions on your hamburger <laughs> no <laughs> you know or are you going to learn to deal with that and so it's kind of it's if you look at it kind of like a game we're down here in this game learning how to navigate a human body and this human body that can take over and completely not listen to us at all and just run with this human life and not listen to us or this can we have this human body connect with that higher higher self and the as far as karma goes and working out things with others it's all just there's really no rules this is what they're saying there's no rules behind it it's will I do something nice with them will these two souls decide well I'm going to do the same thing to you so a lot of souls on the other side are not mature mm-hmm. they're not mature they'll say well if you killed me I'm going to go kill you or blah, 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 blah. and then they come down and that's what they play out so really Souls have free will, just like humans have free will, and just like there's crappy people, there's crappy souls. You know, and, and sometimes the crappy souls will come down here, incarnate in a beautiful little baby, and they're going to grow up to be maybe kind of a crappy person because they're, they're working through stuff. So everyone's not born equal. A lot of people, we're all born equal in that we have the same access to the zero point. We still have access to Source, to the Holy Spirit, to whatever you want to call that pure peace inside of us. But everybody's born different, you know. So. Well, to some extent, with a predetermined destiny, mm-hmm. yeah. they may or may not elect to accomplish. Yeah. Exactly. Life. Well, if you're not too tired, I'd like to take a break unless the yeah. guys have something else they want to say about higher self. But if they're done, let's take a little break. And then what I'd like to do is do a session with you, Gail, and Madison okay. talking about connecting to your newborn. Because okay. lots of people are having babies. You've just had a baby. Mm-hmm. And we have a baby here. And so I think this would be a perfect topic perfect. for our next Madison's gonna be famous. Bill and Marissa's <laughs> show. All right. And maybe Gail. Perfect. Okay. All right.